Hey everybody, AmpReparGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So we have a very sick Kenwood kind of Teal 922 here. I have five of them here now. There's another one over there, and uh, the rest are in boxes. I mean, I'm fully loaded with work here. I got, but I'm going through them, getting them done one by one. So uh, anyway, I'll go over this real quick. So far, I've put the meter protection diode in, series glitch resistor. Someone put the filter cap board in. Uh, this thing had a Amprex tube, old, old one, I'm not even sure if it's genuine or not, or a reproduction, um, and an old Chinese tube on the other side with the brown base. You're not supposed to put in mi mixed match tubes, I never do that, I do not recommend that. So, someone took this coil out to change the band switch. And they did a really bad job soldering it. I, I'm going to touch up on that. Um, air variables look okay. Customer said it's not working on 160 or 10. It comes stock with 10. I looked at the band switch. Looks like it's wired correctly. And contacts all look okay. I'll show you the bottom in a second. Looks like someone added a padding capacitor in parallel with one section of the load tuner. So I'm going to take the load, um, uh, tuning capacitor. I'll take the side panel off. To see what's going on with that. They changed the pair of six suppressors. So this thing's really been messed with. So wait till you see the bottom. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so someone swapped out the filament transformer. Tubes are normally in series. The filament's usually in a stock runner in series. So in this, uh, with this transformer, they wired them in parallel. I already did the bias modification. They do have the winding here that they rectify for the uh, cutoff, and it looks like they added a little mini transformer to run the meter lamps. Um, ground the grid's better. I mean, I almost didn't want to work on this, but the guy is a good guy, and I agreed to work on it. So, someone changed some of the capacitors over here. So, you know, I'm just uh, going through all of it, and... Uh, yeah, so there's also another cap over here. I just don't know, you know, that's in parallel with the output, with the load. So just a mess. This doesn't have line cord as a receptacle on the back. There's a plug that goes in. So a lot of stuff going on here. You see the wires are clipped right there. Yellow and black. those connect so I'll figure that out so when you buy an amplifier get pictures before you buy it always ask for pictures there was a story behind this supposedly came from Japan owned by a company and you know supposedly owned by the company that made it a technician yada 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 big time story so always ask for Pictures. Pictures worth a thousand words. Okay, so I'm going to get to work and I'll be back. Okay, so it looks like a thousand puff cap. That would explain why it's not working on 10 meters. The things people do. Okay, so I will get to work. <laughs> Wish me luck. Well, someone's been in here and they messed with the... Just lots of damage from soldering iron, a soldering iron, really bad solder joints, just I'll change the cap, ay ay ay, so see you guys soon. Everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, so I am back with the completed Kenwood Till 922. So, like I said before, a uh, guy, a return customer who had, well, I didn't say this before, but a return customer who had another 922 that I went through wanted a second one. So, he went ahead and bought this online, and uh, there was a whole story behind it. An engineer who worked for this company supposedly went through it, came from Japan, yada, 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 all this stuff. So, I'm going to go over everything that I ended up having to do to it. So, he had the, like I said before, he had a thousand puff cap in parallel with the load tuner to ground, and then there was another one, a, 
a 70 puff doorknob. So I think I know why he did that. He had uh, arc damage on the air variable here on the load side. So when the capacitor is fully meshed, it must have been arcing. So he was trying to get around that by having that cap in there problem. You know, so he could have it not fully meshed and still operate it. But the problem is that stopped it from working up on 10 meters. Okay, so also it had two different tubes in it. Here's one of them. Brown base China, old one. And then an Amperex with a piece of metal in it. Okay, so that's that. So ended up changing the load tuner, putting a new load tuner, uh, put in new parasitic expressors. I wound them like this years ago, so shorten the path right there. You know, brand new set of Pentalab tubes, awesome company. Put the strap in there, put the strap in down there for the, the uh, so there's less inductance between the plate tune cap and the tube grids. Already had the Hartbach filter cap board, put in the diode to protect the meter, and also a series glitch resistor with the plate. Oh man, this, the, the, he had gone in here and, you know, the solder joints were just horrible all over the place. I touched up on that solder joint. He had taken the coils out to change the band switch. Just horrible solder joints all over. So that's all set. So uh, I'm going to flip it over and I'll show you the bottom. Oh, he also, I think he re rewound the plate choke. Looks okay. Uh, but uh, you can tell it's been rewound. But. So, okay, so I will flip it over and I'll show you the bottom. Be right back. See you soon. Okay, so I changed the SO239 connectors. These ones had little to no grip, and the customer will be getting these back. I put Teflon ones in. One of these, I thought this was I thought this was a 30 at first, but it's actually 15, but this is a 20. This requires 15 amp slow blow fuses. You always want to have the proper size fuse in uh, your electronic uh, piece of equipment. So whether it's a radio or whatever, or amplifier. Okay, so I did the bias modification, grounded the grids the proper way, had some really thick material and it was poorly done. Changed the bypass caps, the base of the filament choke, changed the cap over here, touched up on solder joints, touch up on solder joints all over. The wire I saw clipped over here is actually over here too, it's just the old filament lead, so I left it alone, I didn't want to cut in all this. Um, someone put a, it's actually a Peter Dahl filament transformer, I don't, it, it's a, uh, I don't believe it's an original Peter Dahl. It doesn't say Peter W. Dahl, but still it's a replacement and the filaments are now in parallel instead of series. They added this meter lamp transformer. I left that alone. The meter lamps are working. Changed the electrolytic cap. Once again, touched up on solder joints. He had uh, another doorknob cap down here, which I removed, and I added that, that mica cap, the uh, uh, ceramic disc cap, I'm sorry, and you know, that was missing. Sometimes it's over here and then, or it's over here between this screw and this connection. So that's the same part of the circuit. So put that in. Uh, he had a piece of wire going from the band switch to the stock piece of wire going to the old air variable capacitor on the load side. I removed and they were poorly soldered together. So I removed that, put a, a, the proper gauge wire in from the band switch over to the capacitor and those connections are soldered really well on the capacitor now they were uh, poor solder joints added the strap over here he had replaced these doorknobs they're working it tunes up full out put on all bands so you know I strongly suggest pictures when you buy something ask for pictures you know if you're thinking about buying something and you you wanna you know you, you're planning on sending it in and you want me to look at the pictures or whatever feel free to text them you know you really want to make sure the band switch is okay. You want to make sure you just did. I mean, this this was like a real mess. You know, it took a lot of time, went through everything. Now it's it's good. But you know, he was lucky. I had a capacitor for the load side, and you know, he was lucky the the one on the plate side was okay. But just a lot of work, and now it's all set. So if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. My phone number is two zero three. 892-4119 and my website is amprepairguy.com that's amprepairguy.com thanks for watching please like share and subscribe i'd really appreciate it 73